Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel Rosal on YouTube, Israel and Jerusalem on Pact. Uh, this is another installation in my Hamas interrogation videos dubbed series, dubbing the uh, Hamas interrogation videos as they come out through the various channels. Just before we get started with this uh, video, I wanted to make a couple of uh, glossary notes for those um, unfamiliar with the terminology. Two words come up a lot in this, inter in this particular video. One of those is the Nukba. And one of those is Qassam. So Nukba is the special force units of Hamas that participated extensively in the October 7th massacre in Israel. It's a smaller unit than the Qassam. And when they talk about the Qassam, it's a uh, shorthand for Is Adin al Qassam Brigades. And that's the military wing of Hamas. So Hamas is actually both a sort of political, charitable institution in Gaza and it has a army as such. Sometimes they actually refer to it as the army. And that's the uh, Al Qassam uh, Brigade. So, like in any sort of army, uh, as you'd expect, the special force elite unit as such is smaller than the bigger one. In this, in this case, the Nukba being the special forces and the Qassam being equivalent to the normal standing army. So, let's go and listen to this particular tape. So, the first line is "Remind me of your name, Salim." Salim Amr Salim Abu Ayad. And where are you from in Gaza? I'm from Rafa. So from 2018, you've been in the Nukba, correct? Omar Sami Marzouk Abarusha. Where are you from in Gaza? The Gaza, uh, Gaza, the Iltafa neighborhood. And you're also in the Nukba, right? Correct. Since when have you been in the Nukba? Uh, between eight months to a year. Hassan, Hassan, Hassan Zarib. And where are you from? I'm from Rafa, the Shibur neighborhood. What's your profession? You told me you're a student, right? That's correct. How old are you? I'm 21. And what are you studying? I'm studying nursing a uh, bachelor's degree. What's your position in the Qassam? First aid responder. What does that mean? First aid responder to the department. Maman Aid Mubarak al Sawara. From where? Uh, Radik in Gaza. And when did you join? A year and a half ago. To the Nukba, yes. When you entered into Israel on October 7th, what was your mission? Kidnapping. Those are your commands? That's correct. Tell me about the course you did on the subject of first aid. The course is a medics course. Officer drivers and ambulance drivers. Who organized the course? The Red Crescent? No, not the Red Crescent. The Red Crescent does offer the same course, but this course was connected to the Hamas military. Half of the participants were civilians and the other half were from the al Qassam Brigade. The head of military services came. We were 35 people in total. He said that the al Qassam Brigade asked those names to be alone or separated, so we understood that we were all uh, members of the Qassam Brigade. At the third meeting, just when we began the course, the first question he asked us was, uh, in case you're an ambulance driver, selected as one, and the commanders call you, or someone calls you on behalf of the commanders, that they want you to drive to a place in the east on the Israeli border, near the border fence, a dangerous place, because now there's an invasion or something close to an invasion is occurring, would you go to that place or would you not? Most of the guys said no. To endanger an ambulance and to endanger myself? For sure, not interested. His answer was no, you have to go. Okay, why? Because the commander's orders are above everything. There may be wounded people there. There may be, for example, a soldier who's with them that they're unable to take. A soldier, you mean to kidnap? Yes. So they take him with them. They kidnap him into the ambulance. They may have a device fitted with them. For example, if they took a valuable device that they want to take with them. What do you mean a valuable device? For example, a weapon. An important weapon, for example, that they didn't kidnap a soldier, but they might take his weapon. Or they took a camera with important material on it from the body of the soldier. You'd have to take that because the commanders see the whole picture. If they sent you, then they understand the situation in the field. And when the ambulance can drive and take the activists and everything they have with them and come back. So what's, what's special about the ambulance? Why is an ambulance? To avoid suspicion. So you're not suspected. That's correct. You'll be suspicious in them, so they don't uh, blow up or target the ambulance, they don't bomb it, the Israelis, correct, I understand. Does al, al Qassam have their own ambulances? Yep, they have their own ambulances too. Where are they? I marked them uh, earlier on the map. They're generally found in a military camp. 
in the camp and they also have a place that isn't in the camp. They have a parking lot which is not in the camp. You told us about ambulances which you, the al Qassam, have, correct? Where are they located? In the uh, in a certain camp. Okay, meaning they don't look like military ambulances. They look like civilian ambulances. That's correct. Why? So that it looks similar to civilian ones and they won't be bombed by Israel. And what do you do with them? During peacetime, they remain in the, at the base. And if there are injuries or wounds during training, because all of our training is with live fire, and during combat, they are used for evacuating. The wounded or civilians or the combatants, the commanders and the soldiers. What else can be transported in those ambulances during the war? Really, anything that's important. Like what, for example? Anything important for the commander isn't really anything needed for the battle. What's the advantage of transporting important people, commanders and ambulances and not in regular cars? Well, Israel doesn't attack ambulances. Meaning you know that we won't attack ambulances, right? That's correct. They can transport their equipment in them, such as food, explosive devices, weapons. They transport all of these things in ambulances. And why is it preferable to transport in ambulances? Because it's safer, because they're, they're not, we know that they're not going to get bombed. The whole subject of medical care, of clinics, of hospitals, is used for their benefit. Absolutely. So they don't get bombed. It's simple. In this way, they're able to transport. That's how they transport everything in ambulances. Explosive devices, weapons, food, medical equipment for the fighters, for the soldiers of Nukba and Al-Qassam. Yes, that's correct. Another thing I'd like to ask you about this building that you said is uh, under located under the school. That's right. Tell me about it. So it's a building that they would use in order to store uh, the important things like weapons, rockets, magazines for the weapons, you know, the important things for war. In my opinion as well, the important kidnapped people will be stored there too. Why don't they use, just use a regular house on the street for that purpose? Why do they use a school or a medical clinic or a mosque? So that people won't suspect and the Israeli Air Force uh, wouldn't expect that these things would be stored in a school and they won't therefore bomb it. So a school, students, we know they won't bomb it. What place do is, does, does Israel never bomb? Hospitals. And what's the connection between the tunnels and, and hospitals? Hospitals, most of them um, are hiding in hospitals. UNRWA, United Nations Relief Works Agency. The medical clinics, okay. Medical clinics, UNRWA, hospitals and schools, yes. They are there. How do they hide? Like in the Shifa hospital, for example, in the Shifa hospital, there's a basement level. They could store people in the basement. Shifa is a big place. It's not a small hospital. So they hide there. They're hiding in Shifa, including the big guys, the heads. Who's hiding in the Shifa hospital? You mean names? No, just in general. The head, it's the headquarters. I mean, what's the advantages of hospitals during war? Why is this place uh, safe? Because we know it won't be bombed. The seniors who are, who are in Ashifa, who do you think they are? The seniors like Asimwar, those, really everyone is there. The senior political and military officials, they're all located there. Is that logical, do you think? They take advantage of this area which is meant for uh, weak and injured people, a hospital, that need treatment, etc. Yeah, they use it for themselves, they exploit it. You spoke about several locations where you set ambushes. Yep. You prepared them for the moment that the Israeli army would arrive. That's correct. So side roads that are used for driving the jeeps when they come. Whoever passes through will be very difficult to pass on this side. What did you use for the booby traps? Uh, we used mines that are activated by pressure. Pressure activated mines. And how are the buildings booby trapped? Under the tiles or in the wall? Where do the cables uh, that are placed there lead? The electric cables? Part of them lead to the mosque and part of them lead to the clinic, to both places. Tell me about the mosque. The mosque? It's spread over three different streets and we set all the cables inside the mosque. And there we place the cables. And the second cable is the medical clinic? The clinic, yes. What's that clinic? 
It's a small clinic. Please describe it to me. First of all, how many floors does it have? Two floors. And what's usually there who uses it? Usually there's, you know, nurses and people there. Civilians. Yeah, civilians. People. People. Correct. Which doctors? Which specialities? Doctors for tonsils, ENTs, doctor for uh, fevers, pediatricians, doctors for children. And there's a pharmacy with uh, medicine. And there are secretaries who also give you prescriptions. So usually civilians come to the clinic, civilians, regular people, that's correct. Yeah, so guys and civilians. And the day the Israeli army enters, what occurs in that clinic? Meaning the cables, if the mine doesn't explode from the pressure, with pressure activator, with relative heat, then we activate it manually. And there is equipment inside. You press and it explodes.